Now our hearts set none above you, knowing well that if we love you, you, O Lord, have loved us first. Amen. What an interesting time to hear and contemplate the gospel story for today. People who had filed for extensions may just have paid their taxes this week on the 15th of October. And the issue of connection between politics and religion hangs in the air. Will we elect our second Roman Catholic president 60 years after our country chose John Kennedy? Might Amy Coney Barrett's Roman Catholic faith and personal religious practice be a factor in her decisions? Religious leaders also are signaling changes in the way they think about candidates in the presidential election and the way they regard the use of faith in influencing voters. We have also certainly been immersed in various styles of asking and answering or not so much answering questions on all sides in the presidential and vice presidential debates and town halls and in the hearing for Judge Barrett in the House Judiciary Committee. The Pharisees and the Herodians come to Jesus with a question. It may not be obvious that these two groups generally did not get along, that they looked at the relationship with the empire in completely opposite ways. So they come together here because of a compelling common interest to stop Jesus, to shut down his radical preaching and the threat it posed to the status quo. So they pose a question as well thought out as the queries framed by debate moderators or senators. Answered either way, it could put Jesus in a very bad situation, either with the Roman government or with the people. As we know, though, Jesus is not easily tricked or trapped. Jesus is adept at meeting questions. Instead of a yes or no answer, he responds with a greater challenge. He asks to see the coin used to pay the tax, the coin that is stamped with the image of the emperor and carries the assertion of the emperor's divinity. Whose likeness is on this coin? Jesus asks, and then says, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. This is perhaps one of the most widely known sayings of Jesus in the familiar form, render unto Caesar, and it could be understood as a simple declaration of the separation of civil political life and religious life, the holding intention of two equal but distinct realms. But with Jesus, the meaning and the impact is not so simple. Jesus insists that the relationship between politics and faith is too complex to reduce to platitudes or sound bites or tweets. When Jesus asks about the image on the coin, his listeners may have heard and recognized a deeper, more foundational assertion, a reminder of the very first chapter of the book of Genesis, where God, in creating, says, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. The image of the emperor is stamped on the coin. The image of God is stamped on us and on every human being. Our whole life belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. 
In this exchange, Jesus does not accuse his questioners of blasphemy, even though they're breaking the first two of the Ten Commandments simply by holding that Roman coin and having it. He does not call them unfaithful. He does call them hypocrites. And we note that the origin of that word hypocrite comes from the theater, from wearing masks to take on another identity or to project a different image. The image of God in them has been covered up and distorted. They have forgotten that they belong entirely to God. They've lost their identity. In this conversation, Jesus challenges them and challenges us to recall that identity, to remember what it means to be made in the image of God and to bear God's likeness in the world. We are meant to act like God would act. We are created as an icon through which God may be seen. We carry the stamp of God's love and mercy. We point to the God who creates and sustains and nurtures and redeems and saves. We look for what is just, righteous, and life-giving. We see with the eyes of Jesus those who are left out, left behind, or left unserved. We follow in a way of humility and self-giving love. As we watch Jesus in this encounter which happens within days of his giving up his life on the cross, we extend to one another the grace and generosity God offers to us. Jesus gives us a way of moving through the world even the world as we currently experience it, the intensity of this political season, uncertainty and chaos and division, an election that many call the most significant in the life of our nation. We recognize the complexity of the issues and we hold up the values we see Jesus live. We hold fast to the knowledge that the God whose image we bear is a God of endless and sacrificial love. We do not lose sight of our hope in God's reign, eternal and all-encompassing. We are called to bear the likeness of God and to live in a way that others may see that family resemblance. In turn, we give to all God's children the dignity and respect that recognizes the image of God in them. Sometimes it's the simple things that illustrate and encourage for me, and that happened this week when Jean Robinson, our beloved parishioner, sent an email with a video link in it to a video called Eating Twinkies with God. In this very short two-minute video, we see a little boy, sort of first grade-ish, putting Twinkies and apple juice into his backpack, zipping it up, putting it on, and getting ready for an adventure. And his mom sees him leaving the house and says, where are you going? And he says, I'm going to look for God. And the mom wisely says, okay, dinner's at six, so don't be late. And the little boy ventures out into the world, arrives in a park, sits down on a bench some distance from a woman who is sitting there surrounded by shopping bags, huddled up inside a hoodie. And he takes out the Twinkies from backpack starts to eat one and then hesitates and hands it to this woman sitting on the bench with him. She says, thank you. He says, you're welcome. But suddenly her face 
this beautiful dark brown face comes alive and the two of them begin just to laugh, laughing back and forth with no other conversation. Pretty soon he pulls out the apple juice and gives her a bottle and takes his bottle and they continue to feast and laugh there on the bench until he suddenly looks at his watch and says, oh, it's time, I gotta go, and gives her a hug and runs back off and gets home in time for dinner. He's greeted by his mom who says, well, did you find him? And the little boy very calmly says, God is a woman, mom, and she has the most beautiful smile I've ever seen. Video then flashes to the woman who had been sitting on the bench. She's now carrying her shopping bags and sits down next to a very beleaguered woman sitting on another bench. And the woman says to her, why are you in such a good mood? And the answer from the Twinkie eating, apple juice drinking lady is, I just ate Twinkies in the park with God. He's much younger than I expected. What does it mean and who will see the image of God in us as we move through the world? And where will we find the image of God in others? And how will we bear the likeness of God now in this season and into eternity? Amen.